the question, how do you follow up the most impressive and successful event in NXT history? The answer, how about 90 more minutes from Brooklyn? How about that? Let's get into it. NXT review right here on Dead on Dave Productions. So many pieces all back together now. What's your vision? That's right, that's right. This is Dead on Dave, your boy. Welcome back to the channel. How you guys doing? Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful day here in Germany. Woo and it is time for your NXT review. And as you know, I haven't watched that NXT yet. No, no copious amounts of notes for you kids. No, not today. No, because you know my my weekly reviews. We we do we do it a little different. We get crazy. We go segment by segment, match for a match, and I give you my up to the second reactions and analysis because I'm an analyst. No, I'm just a douche who loves wrestling. So let's get right into it. Let's jump it on, strap on, strap it in, buckle it up, and all those weird things people say. Let's jump on the rocket ship to NXT because we're getting 90 more minutes from Brooklyn. And I, for one, am excited for it. This should be really good. Should be a lot of fun. Should be interesting. And uh, I'm going to shut up and let's, uh, let's start watching it. Here we go. Okay, about five minutes in, there's already something to talk about. Uh, the match between the eight-man tag between Enzo and Cass and the Mojo, Rowley, and Woo Woo Woo, Zack Ryder versus their opponents. I don't want to say all their names. Gable, Jordan, and the other two. That I really like, by the way. I'm going to get into that match. Uh, it hasn't even started yet, but the intro by Cass and Enzo. A couple things. One, huge pop, man. They absolutely love these guys. I don't think there's any question. It's time to bring them up to the main roster. It's time. Let's do it. Second, Cass fucked up. No, I'm sorry. Enzo fucked up. Now, I'm not, look at me. Look, I'm Enzo. Enzo seemed to get way over emotional, and he messed up his lines. And, uh, man, that's kind of, that's a little worrisome. I can, I can understand. Look, maybe it's, it's a little bit of – it's understandable. It's understandable. But it was a small mistake, bona fide and bona fide. He said it twice. That's fine. But, I mean, look, these are the type of things that uh, you might not think this, but these are the type of things that Vince and the WWE really look for. You get a high-pressure moment. You can't crack. You have to deliver, especially what you're most known for. You've got to deliver. You cannot let you – can, you cannot let – you cannot let the crowd. You can't let the crowd or anything else distract you from delivering. So – I don't think it's a big deal. I just thought it was worth pointing out. It's just something to keep in mind. Maybe maybe it's not time. No, I, st I still think it's time to bring them up. Well, maybe that's why the Dudleys are here. Maybe it's one of the reasons why the Dudleys are here. You don't have to rush up the tag teams. It, it seems like we have a new revolution going on. Uh-oh, God, scary term. But of tag teams in the NXT, all these new tag teams that are forming, and this tag team tournament that's starting out, all this stuff. So maybe maybe there is something here going on that we're not really, we haven't put it all together yet. I don't know. Let's find out. But let's uh, get this eight-man tag going and watch that, huh? How about that? Hey, uh, 17 minutes and some change in. The match is still going on between the, the eight-man tag. It's really good and everything's going well and everything. Something I just want to talk about for a few minutes. Like a little bit of a rant. This is just something that bugs me. And most people are going to be like, oh, fat man, you're being stupid. And that's possible because I am pretty stupid. But this drives me nuts. We've had a week where we, we, we're getting a lot. And I know it's it's been all Brooklyn. It's been all Brooklyn. And I get that. And this is a, it's a crowd that knows what they want. And blah, blah, blah. And that's great. But this whole we want bullshit, it drives me insane. It, it, it really does. There is no reason at the beginning of a match to disrespect all the other competitors. Look, don't get me wrong. I understand where they're coming from, but it is a sign of disrespect when you have some other people in the ring trying to do their thing. And then we want Enzo. We want Cass. We want this. We want that. We want Sasha. We want Lana. We want JBL. All this stuff. I get that it is a form of protest in some ways. Look, I understand all of the reasoning 
behind doing it. I think sometimes it's it's completely warranted. I think other times it's not. The Divas division right now, the the, the way that they are mishandling the Divas, the, the these unbelievably great talents in women wrestling uh, by trying to think what we want by giving us all the all of them at the same time these terrible tag matches. I'm cool with that. That's that's not so bad. But in this eight man tag where it just starts and you're already screaming for Enzo, I, I don't think you're allowing a story to be told. And it just to me it harkens back to something that always drives me nuts. It's like when you go to a concert, and depending on where you are, not all crowds are like this, but it's just like going to any concert. I'm gonna tell you know what I'm gonna just tell a personal story. When I was in Iraq in 2007, everybody knows that I saw uh, tribute to the troops and all that. But we also had other events that would come. We had Puddle of Mud come once uh, this one time. And this was actually the second time I had seen Puddle of Mud while in the Army. And they're putting on a hell of a show, man. They played for two hours, played this great concert, all their hits and everything, right? Except for like two or three they hadn't played yet. And obviously they're going to close the show with it. So... Throughout the show, there's this group of people who kept chanting, Play fucking hates me! Play fucking hates me! And eventually, towards the end of the show, the fucking singer got agitated and said, Look, calm the fuck down. <laughs> We're gonna play it. We're just trying to get through all the other stuff. Just calm down. It's frustrating. It's frustrating to hear stuff like that. Blade fucking hates me. These are soldiers, too. It drove me absolutely nuts. So there was no drinking. It was just idiocy. There was a bunch of people who only knew a couple of songs from them, which is fine. I get that. But don't disrespect the band. Don't disrespect the performers. It drives me nuts. I know I sound like the old man with a stick. Get off my lawn, you kids. But whatever. You know what? Jesus Christ. Here's the problem. There's not enough old men saying get off my lawn now those old men are vilified because oh you're out of touch fuck you i'm out of touch i know what i like and i know what i want and i know what i think is disrespectful and you know what when you go through the history books and you look back you find out these things categorically and historically hold to be true anyway rant over let's get back to nxt because that's what you're here for so let's get back to the match and check out What's going on with Cass, Enzo, and all the other guys? Since everybody wants Enzo so much. And now you're getting him too, by the way, because the first 12 minutes of this match has been a beatdown for Enzo. Really good match, by the way, so far. A lot of fun. Uh, Enzo takes a beating like nobody else. So let's get back to it and see how this match ends. So about 20 minutes in, and we got to finish the match. Enzo and Cass getting the victory with their Air Enzo maneuver. Uh, so they get the win for their team. Mojo and Zach, you know, the hype brothers. Uh, excuse me. And uh, Enzo and Cass get the victory over a very game. Wilder. Dash Wilder and Dawkins and uh, Gable and Jordan. Uh, first, I want to give a little love to, to Chad Gable. I love this guy. I, Olympian, great wrestler. I absolutely love him. Love Jason Jordan, too. Actually, I love all four of those guys, to be completely honest. Uh, Wilder and Dawkins, I, I really enjoy as well. And they said something in the show that I said last week, and maybe even two weeks ago, that how Dawson and Wilder remind me and remind a lot of people of the old throwbacks, the Brain Busters. They, 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 they went back to Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. I was like, yeah, okay, Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Brain Busters, Olin Arn. Yeah, absolutely. I could see all of that uh, 100%. I really do like that team quite a bit. Uh, but I think a lot of people are just making it because of the jackets, <laughs> to be completely honest. Which, by the way, I think we need more of them. I love those jackets. I love them. I love them. Old school. Reminds me of Larry Zabisco. Yeah, I love it. Um, so anyway, really good match. They gave a lot of time to it. It was a good way to kick off this 90-minute special. I'm going to call it a curtain call for NXT because that's what it feels like. It feels like it was just a good way to say goodbye. And it's going to be interesting to see how they edit it. And now uh, NXT is adding more and more tour dates. They're, they're going to Texas coming up in September. So, I mean, all kinds of stuff is happening. So it's going to be very interesting to see the evolution of NXT. 
So what did you guys think of the first match? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're just sitting there doing nothing, go ahead and hit that like button because likes are free. Also, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. We're 1,235 subscribers strong. Thank you guys very much. You guys are kicking ass, taking names, and helping this channel become one of the most popular and hot new wrestling YouTube channels in all of the YWC. So for that, I thank you. If you want to support the channel other ways, you can go ahead and pick up some copious gear. Go on over to www.deadondave.spreadshirt.com and get your copious gear. The shirt, copious club shirt, which is even cooler. I'm going to buy one of those soon. And the copious mug. Drink from my face. Also, you can go ahead and write into the description box of this video and donate to the channel if you are so inclined. Give the fat man a tip. It's all good to me. Look, I appreciate all that. So let's go ahead and get back to the action and check out what is next on NXT. Let's do it. About 21 and a half minutes in, William Regal announces that the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, Classic starts next week and Adrian Neville comes over there and interrupts and says, hey, if there's a spot I really want to be in this tournament and, you know, give love to Dusty and all that. Um, interesting. It's a good move. I like it. I like Neville down in NXT. But uh, it's a little weird, a little scary. Maybe something, uh, maybe they're having a second thought. I doubt it. I doubt it. Look, it's just a, uh, it's filler. Let's be honest. It's a smart way to bridge the gap between now and then, you know, the next level, next grouping of NXT stars that are going to be coming up. As nice of an idea as the, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament is, we know what it is. It's it's a really good storyline that is designed to fill time, and that's what we're going to get. It should be highly entertaining. It's going to be really, really good, but I don't... It, it's not for the tag titles, which would be a really good idea, by the way. But it's not for anything like that. Maybe there's a number one contendership at the end of it. But, you know, we know what it is. And that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, the tag champs should and probably will be in this tournament, you would think. So we'll see how that all goes. Should be interesting. I just thought it's uh, worth noting that Adrian Neville is coming back to NXT. And if it's just a one-time only thing. Let's get back to NXT ourselves and see what's next. 26 minutes in and we got a really nice look at Emma, man. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. It was a good little synopsis of her entire career, her rise and her fall, and now her rebirth. And I think it was really interesting. I think that it also shows that there are still some big plans left for Emma. And with all of the divas that are leaving and with all the changes happening in NXT, she's going to be an integral part to the next generation of NXT divas. And I think that's a great choice because, first off, she's smoking hot. She could really wrestle too, man. She really knows what she's doing. She she's a general in there. She she's a very um, she achieves a lot, is what I'm trying to say. She's very good at what she does. I couldn't remember the word that I wanted to say, but hey, you know what I mean. Emma's pretty damn awesome, so I'm pretty excited to see her back and really kicking some ass. We'll see how this fatal four way goes a little bit later tonight. Speaking of divas, it looks like we're about to get. Carmella, yay! Where's his Eve? Uh, let's see how Eve has improved since the last time that we saw her. Let's check it out. 36 minutes in, 37 minutes into the show about actually. We got Eve Marie and Carmella. Now look, all right. Nice time's over. All right, I I'm going to try and be as fair as humanly possible. Eve Marie is horrible, man. Uh, and she's, it, look... I appreciate the work she's put in. I do. I do. I, I really do, man. And I see the improvement over what she was. But I'm not seeing enough. I don't think that with as much time as she's had now. Look, if you do nothing but train for six, seven, eight months, which is what she's been doing, and you can't overcome your lack of athleticism, there's a problem. There's a problem. Every She's so slow running those ropes. I mean, oh. Oh my God, her transitions are slow and sloppy. And the thing was, Carmella, as much as I enjoy her, she's not good enough to mask Eva Marie's shortcomings. And so it was a really ugly match. And the Brooklyn crowd absolutely ate 
Eva alive, man. That was ugly. You could tell they edited some of that, some of the chants too, because I, I guarantee it got a hell of a lot more ugly. Um, the sliced bread number two, it's it's ugly when she does. It's slow. You can't walk up the ropes as slow as she does. The move is supposed to be fast and impactful and give you a wow factor. She basically just bloop, 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 boom, you know, and it's just, it loses all effectiveness. I just don't see a long-term good for Eva. I just, I'm having a hard time with it. And I feel bad. I feel bad because I know how hard she's working, man. But sometimes when you are that unathletic, there's nothing wrong with putting her in a Lana role. Lana's probably never going to wrestle because of some, I don't know, rumored back issues or rumored medical history. That's neither here nor there. Uh, all the backstage talk is that they people have seen her wrestle, and she is a good wrestler, but she apparently she may have had some problems getting cleared. There's nothing wrong with having Eva Marie as a heel manager. Jesus, man, she can't wrestle. She can't focus on getting her better on the mic. Focus on getting her to to be be sunny. Just be sunny. There's nothing wrong with being sunny. Now there is, but I mean, be sunny. Just go out and just be a tag team manager. Be sunny. You'll be fine. She'll be fine. She's good. We don't need her in the ring. She is just, she's so unathletic, and I'm sorry, I feel bad, I really do, because I like her, and I love looking at her, because she's absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, she has great costumes, like, everything about her, the package is there, it's all there, wrapped up beautifully, she's got the great look, she's bronzed, she's got great style, man, her outfits look fantastic, her ring walk is great, her hair flips, the hair, everything is wonderful, but there's just no substance in the ring. And I feel bad because I know and I, and some people are going to be like, well, you're just, you don't like the divas or you, you just don't. Un no, man, there's wrestling. There's good wrestling and there's bad wrestling. And this is just bad athleticism that is leading to very poor matches. She can't transition around the other woman. She can't transition into other maneuvers. Everything she does is slow. It's horrible. It's just God. Let's, let's just put an end to this. She went up after the match and started going like this on her stomach. I know she had to be like showing where her future C-section is going to be because I know it's not about a title. That's insane. It can't be. It can't be a title. Oh, my God. No. But they're going to push her to that. And it's a mistake. It's a mistake. She's not ready. She needs another year at least of training. At least. But you can't train athleticism you can't improve natural ability to be able to run the ropes if she can't do it she's not going to be able to if she can't simply run from one end of the ropes to the other faster than that without looking like a mechanical robot she's never going to be able to six seven eight months she needs to be able to at least do that and she can't do it she can't it looks horrible looks horrible and she's going to continue to get eaten alive and eventually it's going to affect her for being viable in any other capacity and that is on wwe it's short-sightedness and stupidity by wwe if they continue to let this happen pull the plug now i'm sorry i love eve marie but jesus it's done it's over Ugh. all right let's move on and see what's next on nxt all right in more diva anger I got another thing I got to talk about. We just got a segment from Dana Brooke and Miss Emma in the back. And it was absolutely horrible. Emma was unintelligible. You cannot understand a word she was talking about. Dana Brooke looked ridiculous and sounded even worse. Uh, it's I, I'm, I don't know what to say. Emma, come on. Step up here in the backstage a little bit. But I understand it's difficult working with someone like Dana Brooke who just her timing even in promos are bad cutting off Devin and not even giving it. I mean, look, it's okay to cut off once they've set you up, but Devin didn't set her up. There was no setup. So, uh, yeah, that was bad. And it makes me worried. It makes me worried. Dana, because Dana Brooke can't be what Eva could be. Eva could be a good manager. Dana can't. Dana can't. She can't. She cannot. Can't do it. 
So they've invested a lot of time and money and effort into Dana, and I don't think that investment is going to bear fruit. But let's be fair, and let's go ahead and watch the match a little bit later on, and uh, I'll judge after that. All right, let's get back to NXT and see what's happening. More tag team news for next week's Dusty Rhodes Memorial Tournament. Uh, William Regal is doing a really good job of selling, building it up for next week, and he announces the opening match for next week. It's going to be an interrupting Baron Corbin teaming, 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 hey, teaming, teaming with Rhino to take on the most dominant tag team in NXT history, the Ascension, who desperately needs something to do. So uh, this is good. This is good. I like all these talents coming back. I wasn't so sure with the Neville thing because it made me worry that maybe there was something else going on. But now that more people from NXT are coming back, you know, to pay tribute to Dusty, now I see for what it is. And I'm very excited about it. And anything to get the Ascension's value up. Anything. Please, Jesus, Lord. Because they're good. I like them a lot, man. Just let's get their, let's get their value up there. Come on. So that should be interesting. Uh, let's see what is next, shall we? All right, next up, we got the reemergence of Bull Dempsey. He looks the exact same. <laughs> he, he looks the exact same. I mean, I get, the, look, it's the joke. That's the funny thing. But look, he looks the exact same. He didn't look like he got in any better condition. They tried to put it over like, oh, he, he lost a couple of pounds. But look, if they're going to continue this, they should have had him lose. They should have had him lose. Because why not? Why not? Have him lose. Just make it funny. You make it funny. I mean, it, his finisher is the whoopee cushion. Let's let's be honest. It, it's the whoopee cushion. It's Doink the Clown's finisher. And Jesus Christ, as he was coming down to the ring and basically the entire match, I was like, please tuck your nipple in. One nipple hanging out. I'm like, tuck it in. Just, eh. Somebody walk out from the back and just go, Meh. Please get that nipple in. Oh my god. <sighs> anyway, yeah, the match was kind of crappy. Elias Samson was in there with him. The drifter. I okay. God, that feels so 1993, doesn't it? The drifter. Eesh, that makes me ooh, God. Ooh. Made me ooh. Made me worry. Ooh. I'm getting worried even thinking ooh. 90s. Ooh. Oh, I can't deal with it. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I felt about that. Uh, the Brooklyn crowd really did not care for it. But I got to be honest, I'm, after four shows with Brooklyn, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what to, take, what to take from this crowd anymore. So it's just like, eh, meh. The match was so-so. But let's, let's not get crazy, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think of the reemergence of Bull? Uh, the boxing, right? It's just like, it was all so hokey. If you're going to go that hokey with it, have him lose. Have him lose. Make it funny. Screw it. Anyway, let's get back to it and see what is next on NXT. So we got a quick reaction from the former tag team champions and, of course, Miss Alexa Bliss, who announced that next week she will be taking on Blue Pants in a one-on-one -on -one singles competition at least that team has not disbanded which thank god for that because they are so good together would hate to see that happen so all right it uh, looks like main event time which is the fatal four-way divas match let's see if it's any good i heard that there was a botch here so let's uh see what happens oh my god oh my god really Oh, God. Oh. Whew. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, well, <laughs> that was horrible, man. Uh, that fatal four way. There was some good moments with Charlotte. Like, if Charlotte and Becky were not together doing something, that was god awful. <sighs> well, Everybody was wondering what the botch was. Where there was the botch? How was the botch going to happen? Well, the botch ended up being somebody not making a save and the ref counting the three on the wrong person because somebody didn't make a save. And everything that I read was one diva was not ready to make the save and it wasn't really hard to figure out who was going to be. And then, uh, yes, it was Dana. Dana not anywhere near where she, It's obvious where they were positioned in the ring, 
that this was supposed to be Dana just pulling Emma off of Becky, which was going to lead to more strife between those two, and then they would implode a little bit, and then we'd have the finish that we ended up seeing with Becky and Charlotte hitting the double finisher. I bet they were both going to get the win. I bet that was the planned finish, is they were both going to get the win, a uh, double um, submission, something like that. I have a feeling that's what they were going to do, because that was, oh, that was ugly, man. Dana Brooke was horrible. Almost every second she was in this match, she looked terrible. Terrible. I hate her stomp. She does this weird stomp where her entire body leaves the ground and she stomps on the ground as she stomps on the person. It looks, oh God. Like, is nobody helping this woman? I it just, oh. Uh, look, this was an interesting NXT. There were some really good moments and there were some really bad moments. I thought all the recapping of NXT TakeOver was really well done. The voiceover work by Corey Graves and showing the really cool, smoky, grainy, vintage look of the highlights I thought was really good. I thought they set up next week's NXT fantastically. Uh, but if I have to judge off of what I saw tonight from match work, other than the first match, it was absolute garbage. Other than... The first eight-man tag that we saw tonight, it was horrible. Horrible wrestling. Horrible. Not bad. Horrible. It was really, really subpar, and I'm a little bit disappointed to say that. So I give like, I give this episode, I give it a five. I give it a five, and I, I think it's a generous five. It's just, I was not feeling it. It was just, I don't know. I don't know. There are things to like from it. Don't get me wrong. A lot of things to like from it, but there's just not enough. The way more bad that outweighs the good. It's just how it was. What did you guys think of this week's NXT? Am I being too harsh on it? I don't know because both women's matches were just god awful. Now, look, we know what we're going to get from Charlotte and Becky. That's fine, but they can't. You can't have a fatal four way and then basically try to cut out two members because every time that Emma and fucking Dana was in there, it was horrible. Horrible. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe I'm a dick. I have no idea. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Not on if you think I'm a dick, but what do you think uh, on what you think of NXT this week? Other than that, that's all I got. Make sure you support the channel. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out Joe Crone Show, the Joe Crone Show on YouTube. And of course, my good friend Tommy C over at Shop from the Point, the most badass hockey podcast in all the known land, makes his return this week. Two weeks of vacation. He goes back to Shop from the Point Live. Make sure you check that out as well. Other than that, that's all I got. I'm your boy, Dead on Dave. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, and share. And as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends. Peace.